So it appears the Dodgers GM saw my video about Manny Machado needing to be traded to the Dodgers two months ago. That's right, back in May. I mean, that's like the title of the video, card in the top right-hand corner of the screen. But it appears he saw my video because the Los Angeles Dodgers went out and traded for Manny Machado. I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section below, so make sure you go down there, leave a comment, let me know what you think about the trade. There's going to be a conversation down there. This is something we do on all the videos. I get like 300 plus comments. So get down there. Let's talk. Let's talk baseball. You can also follow me on Twitter at GiraffeNeckMark. Link in the description. And make sure you do leave a like on it. 250 plus likes would be very much appreciated to me. So we kind of figured that this was already going to happen over the past few days. There was rumors that it was basically a done deal as of yesterday, just waiting for physicals, all that kind of stuff. And they wanted Manny Machado to play his last game in like an Orioles uniform for the All-Star game. And then something happened today where it's not, not unusual of the Orioles. There was a minor, a minor issue in one of the physicals of one of the five prospects that they received, and they almost shut down the trade because of that. Steve Phillips has a show on MLB radio on Sirius XM with Eduardo Perez. And back in May, when I was driving home from South Carolina, he was talking about this. Steve Phillips was saying that during the time of being a GM for the Mets, he tried to make numerous trades with the Orioles. Some of them were basically set in stone, done. But the Orioles owner, Peter Angelos, is insanely anal about physicals. And if there is the slightest, the slightest issues that 29 of the other 30 teams in Major League Baseball would, would not care about, he would find it an issue and he would just shut down trades. And that's almost what happened today with the Manny Machado trade. Now, let's actually go over exactly what the trade is, what the Dodgers received, and officially what the Orioles received. I don't know why I said we clarify what the Dodgers received. They got Manny Machado. That's pretty obvious. The Orioles are receiving five prospects from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Outfielder Yusniel Diaz, who played in the Futures game. I think he even hit a couple home runs. Second baseman, Bravik Valera. Third baseman, Rylan Bannon. Right-handed pitcher, Dean Kremer. And right-handed pitcher, Zach Pop. Fantastic. Fantastic baseball name, by the way, especially for a pitcher. Zach Pop, that's sick. So yeah, using LDS hit two home runs. He plays in double A. He hit two home runs in the Futures game earlier this week. Currently in the minor league season, Diaz is hitting 314 with a 905 OPS. He's hit six home runs, 30 RBIs. 36 runs scored. He is the fourth ranked prospect in the Dodgers organization, I believe in the 80s in all of baseball. In regards to Zach Pop and Bravik Valera, there's no official ranking of where they rank for the Dodgers. They're not in their top 30 prospects. And then with Bannon and Kremer, they're 27 and 28. Kremer's 22 years old. He's been playing in double A. He's six and three this year with a 3.03 ERA, 125 strikeouts in 86 innings, which is a lot of strikeouts. He, he seems to be a pretty decent pitcher. Bannon's been playing single A baseball this year. He's hitting 296 with 20 home runs and 61 RBI. So that guy's got some serious pop and can play third base. Bravik Valera, 26 years old, 284, six home runs this year. He seems like a guy who can maybe be more of a player now than down the line. And Zach Pop has gone between single A and double A this season with a 1.04 ERA and 43 innings while striking out 47 and having a batting average of on opponents of 0.168. So even though Zach Pop didn't pop up, <laughs> oh man, I can't believe I said that. Hold on. So even though Zach Pop did not appear in the top 30 prospects for the Dodgers, this kid seems like he's got a pretty good arm. So let's go over who wins the trade or let's just go over how I feel about each each way. Manny Machado to the Dodgers. Dodgers needed to do it. I've been saying it since May. They needed to make that move. That's that's They're missing a huge bat with Corey Seager being out. Now, of course, when you talk about this trade, you have to talk about whether or not Manny Machado is actually going to re-sign with the Dodgers. And personally, I think he will. If you're Manny Machado, why wouldn't you re-sign with the Dodgers? As long as they give you pretty much equal money, that's a pretty good organization to be with. They're pretty successful in the past five years. I mean, they did lose in the World Series to the Astros, so they were close. Now, an issue could be that Manny Machado may still want to play only shortstop, and with the Dodgers, he's not going to be playing shortstop. He's going to be at back at third base. You would then move Justin Turner to second base. Chris Taylor kind of loses his spot a little bit. I guess you can stick him back in the outfield, but it makes the team that much better to have Manny Machado because your depth just gets just gets very strong. And especially if they can keep him and next year they have Corey Seager and him, woo, that's some lineup. I also have a saying that you always trade prospects for bona fide stars. Manny Machado is absolutely a superstar in Major League Baseball. Now, he might not have the best fielding numbers this year, but at third base, he's a pretty good third baseman. Shortstop, he's pretty, some, some say he's below average, some say he's really good. So it depends what stats you follow. But we know that he's a pretty good fielder overall. So hitting, fielding, he does it very well. And he was an all-star this year. He's having quite the career season. On the year, while well, I look at my computer screen to read this because there's just too many stats to remember. Manny Machado's hitting 315 with 25 four homers, 65 RBIs, an on-base percentage of 387, which is a little bit higher for him than normal, slugging percentage at 575, OPS at 963, and his OPS plus is 164. So like I said, you always trade your prospects for stars. This guy's a star. If it makes them win the World Series, you do not care about giving up the prospects. Last year, the Astros gave up prospects to get Justin Verlander. They won the World Series. You had the Chicago Cubs giving up Glaber Torres to go get Aroldis Chapman. 
They won the World Series. I mean, you, it, 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 in retrospect, you might be upset, but if it gets you that World Series, it literally doesn't matter. You, you, you were successful in the trade. So yes, I think the Dodgers, smart move, had to make the trade. I like it. Now, from the Orioles side, I like it as well. You know you're not keeping Manny Machado. You're making absolutely no effort to try and re-sign him. It's been very publicly known that they're not going to re-sign him. He's he's gone after this year. So you want to make sure that you get a lot back for him or just, just anything at this point. You don't want to screw it up and let him walk without getting anything. And to get five prospects is a big haul. Got Yusniel Diaz, like I said, who's the number four in the Dodgers organization, 84th overall in Major League Baseball. You've then got Bravik Valera, who's 26, is outside the top 30 of the Dodgers, but still could be a solid little player. You've got Bannon, who is hitting for some serious pop in single A. And then Kremer and Pop, who have pretty good pitching numbers this year. So if you're the Orioles, you're not a year away. You're not two years away. You're definitely not, you might not even be three years away from competing in the AL East because the Yankees aren't going anywhere and the Red Sox definitely aren't going anywhere. So you get prospects that aren't going to be ready in the next year. Maybe you, you hope they could be. That means that they're accelerating their growth. But these guys are probably going to be, you know, two years out from being in the majors. Maybe use Nel Diaz next year. Who knows? But for the Orioles, like I said, they have time. They have time. They're not going to be competitive for the next couple of years. So now you stack up on the prospects and you, you just hope to build your farm system like the Yankees kind of did recently. Except the Yankees were still pretty good and the Orioles are absolute trash. But yeah, I think the Orioles got a good piece in this trade as well. Using the LDS looks like a really good ball player, good outfielder. I know his grades, nothing sticks out like in the 80s or 70s, but all around, he's a very solid player. And if you watch him play in the Futures game, you're like, ooh, this, this dude's pretty exciting to watch. Also, the Orioles are just, their pitching is absolutely horrendous. So the fact that they could get two pitching prospects that seem like they have decent arms is huge for them because they just have not had good pitching in a long time. And like I said, you're not keeping Manny Machado. So getting anything for him, honestly, is a positive at this point. It's just a matter of could they have gotten more which I don't think so the eight the Yankees were didn't want to give up anybody they were like you can have nobody and we'll take Manny Machado and the Orioles were like no I'm not necessarily sure what the Phillies were giving but I'm assuming it wasn't better than the Dodgers otherwise they wouldn't have taken the trade so I think both teams ended up coming out with a with a good trade on both parts now of course the Dodgers need to re-sign Manny Machado next year especially if they don't win the World Series this year, because then it would just be like, really, you rented him to not even win it? But I think getting Manny Machado now makes the Dodgers really close to the favorites in the NL to go to the World Series. The Cubs are still a good team. Brewers need starting pitching. The NL East, who friggin' knows? It, who, who, who saw this coming in the NL East, that the Nationals would be in third, and the Phillies and Braves are battling for first, even though both of those teams still have some holes. But the Dodgers seem like the most complete team, which is why I think that they are right now the favorite in the National League. So, like I said, leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hopefully, I hit 25k by the end of today. You, if you missed my earlier video, steal a star, check the channel for MLB The Show content. And yeah, that's pretty much it. YouTube recommends you watch this video, and I'm gonna go ahead and link the Manny Machado should be traded to the Dodgers video as well, because, I mean, I called it. I can see the future. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Click that face there. It's, it's, I got a very hittable face. So just hit it with your mouse. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.